This podcast discusses video games, modern culture, and technology, and these podcasters are big fat potty mouths. If you're younger than 18 or are easily offended, please stop this podcast now. Oh, and your mom says to take out the trash and do your homework. And welcome to Game Hounds. Game Hounds episode 274. We are recording on Wednesday, August 6th, 2014. I'm Edie Sellers, and with me is Holy Goalie and not Nick. The nope. best show ever. <laughs> this is the new Game Hounds. This is Spinal Tap going jazz. This is going to be the best game, show, uh, game Hound show ever. We're going into a new direction. <laughs> <laughs> Shave? What happens when you shave? You nick yourself. We are not going to shave anymore. There's going to be no more nicks. It's going to be unbelievable. No, but we do have a piss boy in the house. Uh, uh, M. Hawk, Steve, uh, a.k.a. Piss Boy, is sitting in for Nick. Hello, everybody. How's everybody doing this morning? Good. Good. In fact, I had to stop you from doing the show. By the way, if you hear something weird, it's 11. It's the first Wednesday of the month uh, in my town. <laughs> First Wednesday of the month for you. It's the first Wednesday of the month for me, and that means that the um, air raid sirens go off to test oh, them out. I thought it was something else. No. Never mind being all teenage today. Oh, <laughs> Nick and I'm in such a good mood. You are. Oh, gosh, I'm going to get on this show. This is so awesome. Look at you. Yeah, Nick's on vacation with his family. Yes, he is. Uh, God, you'd think he would have grown up past that where he could tell mom and dad to go pound sand when he wanted to put him on the back seat you think he's like i have this image of the brady bunch like when they went to grand canyon everybody sitting in the back of the station wagon <laughs> i could just see nick and his brother you're on my side no you're on my side get off of me get off of me get off of me <laughs> quit it you guys oh jimmy cracked on and i don't care <laughs> punch buggy punch buggy blue Bam! Slap bug. <laughs> hey rusty <laughs> That's what I'm thinking. That's under the Poons vacation. Yeah. Where's the dog? Oh, uh, no. Where's Wizard? Grandma? <laughs> oh, anyway. So a good time without Nick. We haven't missed him I, I, You know why I'm disappointed by not having Nick here? It's because I know that he saw uh, Guardians of the Galaxy on opening night, like, like, the midnight, the 11 o'clock showing on Thursday, which is, I saw it at 7 o'clock on Thursday out at Skywalker Ranch for the employees. And they made me sign an NDA. Really? Yes! Be- <laughs> for a <Nobody> show. <laughs> oh, no. Right, exactly. Uh, 7 okay. o'clock was the showing. Um, so we got out of there at 11 and that was when it was being shown to everybody else. So I got to see it two hours before everybody else and I still had to sign an NDA. <laughs> two hours. <laughs> For two hours. Ugh. But I was so bummed because I immediately saw it and knew how awesome it was. Oh my God. Have you seen, have either of you seen it? No. no oh, I see, that's why I wish it. Nick was here. God damn, that's a good show. Spoil it. Good movie. It it's the Marvel movie that should have been made all along to every single one of the Marvel comic movies because it was fun. It was so fun and so funny, crazy good. And at one point, I didn't know this, but it, until I read it, but at one point it had a hundred percent approval rating on Rotten Tomatoes. Nothing. I, it was fantastic. Yeah, nothing gets a hundred percent. All kidding aside, I, I everybody is saying that it is really, really good. It is really, really, really good. And I, I did I not tell you it's going to be good, and the soundtrack's yes. going to be awesome. It's yeah. really that good, and the soundtrack is that awesome. Yes. <laughs> so there's no Nick on the soundtrack, so that makes there sense. is no Nick on the soundtrack. <laughs> That is so awesome. Yeah, no, it's a it's a good movie. So if if you have not seen it and everyone is saying it's so good, it really is that good. That's what I'm hearing. Yep. I'm hearing good things. Go 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 see it. Go see it so we can talk about it next week. But it is great. You don't have to be a fan of it. You don't have to have known the whole Rocket Raccoon. 
but them hearing is pretty good. Yeah, no, it's yeah. it's hilarious. Hilarious. Hold well, count. My- we have 9,843 followers on the Game Hound Spreaker. Really? Yes, we get 29,000 plays, almost 30,000 plays. 98,000? Yeah. Wait a minute, 98, wait a minute, 9,800. No, okay, so we're almost hitting 10,000. Wow. Yep. Hi, Spreaker fans. I yeah, know I that say we should give games out for ten thousand. <laughs> <laughs> well, here's the reality of Springer: is that you might have ten thousand people that actually are like followers of yours, but all ten thousand don't listen every week. That's like Twitter. I mean, how many people yeah. you follow on Twitter, and you, you don't catch every tweet? No, you know? no, no, no. You can't. you can't. So you follow, you catch what you can. You know, and I, I was even talking to people at the rink last night. I was like, "Oh yeah, I, I catch what I can, but I can't catch them all." I was like, oh, "Okay, we'll do what you can." Right. right. You know, that's all. So, uh, yeah. So, anyway, um, can we just hit the ground running here? Yeah. Can we wrap up The Last of Us? <laughs> I still want to talk about Destiny. When we la- okay, well, hold on a second. We'll hold. We'll, we'll table Destiny. When we left. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. We'll table Destiny for the moment. But Last of Us. When we left left the story last week, Goli hated Destiny. Hated it. Last of Us. Last. Sorry, last. Last of Us. You hated Last of Us. Oh, when? Okay. D- d- playing Last of Us, it-, it was like a first bad date. Going on a first date that went bad. You had nothing in common with the girl. You couldn't figure her out. She couldn't figure you out. You didn't have a feel for it. Everything was awkward. It, but it, it shouldn't have been that way because everything about it said I should like this girl. But the first date went horribly wrong. And then everybody can you just said, no, something's not right. Go out on a second date. She's really a good girl. You'll like her. Stick with it. So you go out on a second date, and, and maybe you find that you, you like the same beer. Okay? Or maybe she finds that she likes you know, the same things that you do. You find some common ground. You're like, okay, well, that was better. It was a, you know, first date went horribly wrong. Second date, okay, it's better. I'm kind of getting her. I'm kind of figuring her out. She's figuring me out. And so it was better. So then you go on the third date, and she takes you back to her place. You find out that she's totally used to cooking. She cooks you this unbelievable meal. She drags you into the bedroom. We have unbelievable sex. She's totally into anal. And you- <laughs> <laughs> How did I see that coming? <laughs> what the heck? What was I thinking on the first date? You know, and now, like, you, you, you're totally in love with her, and, and the rest is history. That's kind of how Last of Us was for me. Really, you 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 are now you get it. You you understand why when you were saying it's worse than Homefront. Yeah, no, to, to 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 kind of to, to take it all full circle, as they say. I actually, after I finished it, and I actually did finish all the way through, right to the very end. Blah 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 blah. <gasps> I went back and started the game over, not from the the very beginning, but from the the first chapter you could actually play. And I and I got what was wrong. Yeah. And what was wrong was that the menus in the beginning were all incomplete. And as you unlock things, the menu began to grow. Mm-hmm. I think what they needed to do, and that's why I was all confused. And that's why even uh, Mrs. Goalie is all confused. She's like, I don't know what's going on. And, this and that. so I, I feel her pain because that's what I went through. And Left for Dead... They have the, your your D pad. You could see what you were gonna get, but it was grayed out. Mm-hmm. Or f- out, okay. They didn't do that with Last of Us. It only appeared when you when you got it. So when you first got the health kit and it was D pad up, and then you get the pistol D pad right, everything else was was it was wasn't there. And then even when you went to crafting, there was no crafting in the beginning. So when you hit the the um, the push pad there, the touch pad, it brought up like half the menu. Because there was no crafting yet. So that's why I was confused. Because when I finally got the craft, I didn't... If I had saw it there, but it was blanked out, I knew something was coming. And if they had had the shotguns on the left D-pad grayed out, I knew it was coming. And if they had the bottle and the and the brick thing on the bottom, I knew I knew what it was going to be. So that's where the menu... Would, they kind of like kept adding to the menu as you played, as you unlocked things. Rather than... Showing you where everything was going to be in the beginning and orientating you to these menus. So even the crafting, that's why I didn't do any crafting for the longest time because it wasn't there in the beginning. So I'm hitting the touch point because it's not there. 
So finally, so it, b- by midway through the game, I, I had a good feel for everything, and I, w- and I was a whiz at everything. But in the beginning of the game, that's why I was frustrated and confused. First of all, there was the movement was weird. It took me forever to get the sensitivity just right and, and playing it. But then it was, it was compounded by the menu problems. And so when I went back and played it a second time, I was like, yep, I get it. I, that's why I was so frustrated because this menu was incomplete at the beginning of the game. Mm-hmm. Whereas a lot of these other menus, you can see what you're going to get. But you can't use it. So now you know where it's going to be. So now it's like, okay, if I get a rifle, I know it's going to be on the left because I saw it grayed out. You know, like Left for Dead, you know where your pills are going to be on the D-pad. But if you don't have any, it's grayed out. And once you get it, it lights up. So you know where that's going to be. And that's where I think it was my problem. And talking to someone at the rink last night that I told this story, they says, oh, uh, it, it must be just like the Uncharted way of doing things. Mm-hmm. This is why she didn't play Uncharted. I don't have a PlayStation 3. So that's where... Um, you know, my frustration come in, it was, was I was trying to learn how they wanted you to play the game rather than just playing the game. And it was very frustrating because I couldn't enjoy the game because I was learning how to play it. Right. Now that I got it, now that I got it and I know how to craft and, and I you know all those pills that you found, what are these pills for? What do I do with them? Mm-hmm. You know, I, deal with, I don't know if they were like the pills for left for dead where it gave you a small boost. Turns out. You know, if you get enough of these pills, then you get, you know, you can upgrade something. I didn't, I didn't know that for the longest time. Even the holsters, okay? The, the holsters, like, why would I craft a second holster? Why would I waste my crafting, you know, uh, whatever you find for crafting? The, the, you know, why would I waste any of my junk crafting a second holster? And then when I finally did, it, it appeared that I, I had two pistols in the, in the quick menu. Mm-hmm. I just, put down the knapsack to take out the second pistol. Didn't explain that either. So that's what my frustration was, is I was like, you know, not, I had to learn all these things on the go, and it was about halfway through the game before I finally figured this all out. So the first half of the game, especially the first 25%, I was in frustration mode, and it, the game was much harder than it needed to be. Right. When I finally learned it all, I was like, oh, my gosh. Yeah, I mean, they needed – I mean – they just need to do a little bit more hand holding and walking you through what they want you to do. Right. And I, at least for me, I, again, Nate, now that I've played it, I can look back and say, "Oh, what are you talking about?" But when coming in cold, I was completely lost. Now that being said, um, I I knew I was going to like the game because I love uh, the whole apocalyptic settings type of thing. Probably goes back to my Planet of the Apes watching in 1971. You know, right. I, Loved it. I love future shows of like the wrecked world and the remnants. So that's what I, I knew I'd like it. But I mean, this game was, uh, boy, this was a lot Dead Island with all the crafting and the zombies. It was uh, a lot like um, Red Dead Redemption. Red Dead Redemption. <laughs> it had the same feel. And, but then it also had some Left for Dead. And then it had some Splinter Cell. It was kind of all rolled up into a neat little cup, you know? Mm hmm. Oh. And, uh, and the story is really, really good. The yes, story it is. Ellie, it is. Ellie is such a good character. She, she, yes, she, she is. is a great, great character. I really, although I got to say, you still are not allowed to kill women and children in video games. Only adult males. You can only kill adult males in video games. Yeah, true. True. Okay, true. so this whole uh, glass ceiling equal rights thing. Um, hello? Hello? You can't have it. I I actually agree with you. I agree with you. I want to kill you in video games if you want to be equal. Okay, if you're gonna bust my balls, nobody. Wait a minute. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. We are not the ones that's saying don't kill us. I completely agree with you. It's just that they're trying to avoid the um, the the cops from the from the 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 bad press that you Uh, kill children. You can't kill women and children. But they all want to be equal. So wait, know. hold on a second. Why? Are, wait a minute. Hold on. We women and children have absolutely nothing to do with the making of the game. We do not make newsflash, goalie. We don't make the rules. But the oh, rules oh, are. Oh, 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 you do. You absolutely make the rules. Bad girl. No, we don't. The rules are: is if you had killing of not so much women, but children. If you had killing of children in games, the press would go nuts. Yes, they will. Right. 
And that's that uh, has absolutely zero to do with us. You can't blame women because we don't want to get killed in games. That's uh, you're making I, an I, assumption. I can, I can. I can. I can absolutely. You can. You'll be wrong. You guys have made it that way. We you know, we, we 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 have made it that way. Excuse me. You ever see commercials how they make fun of guys? Guys are the stupid knuckle dragon guys, and the women's are the smart one. You ever see you make fun of a women in commercial? Not very often because women get mad. I, I completely wholeheartedly agree with you, but please do not blame women for that. We weren't the ones that made that. You didn't pressure society. We way. didn't make the commercials. And no, guess what? Newsflash goalie, women don't have a lot of say in this crap. It is white <laughs> men who are running the media. And it's white men that get the backlash from the women. That's why they don't do it. It's the... Oh, can we move on from this? Because your <laughs> idiocy is, is, is mind-numbing at this point. So, anyway, Left um, um, Last, so, of, us. Last yeah. of Us, yeah. good Last game. Of you liked Ellie. Yeah. But the story, though, it, it, I, saw this, I think it was the Call of Duty game, whereas the world was in ruins and people are still shooting at each other. Yeah. And yeah. this it's like... The country, you know, I, I don't get all of what happened and how long it's been and what really happened. It sounds like what the government's trying to protect you, but they're also killing you at the same time. So it really kind of makes no sense what the government's trying to do. But it's the whole martial law thing, yeah. Yeah, these bands, these bands of people out there. It's like as soon as you see somebody, they want to kill you. Yep. And that that was so depressing. Is that here's this. You know, you're fighting all these infected zombies, okay? You're fighting the ruins of a country that was, you know, you know, the greatest country in the world. And you see somebody and they want to kill you. Mm -hmm. And it, that, that what all, you have. and that, that's what happened with Call of Duty, too, was, you know, you, the, the bomb went off and everything's in rubble and people, are, there's body pieces everywhere. And they're still fighting. Mm -hmm. They're still fighting over what? Over rubble. Yeah. Who wins is going to own this piece of broken rock? Do, do you watch uh, uh, Walking Dead? No. That's pretty much the premise that's, of Walking Dead. Exactly right. Yeah, that's what I've heard. Yeah. Yep. Exactly right. It's much. and I. It's, it's like every post-apocalyptic piece of media has to do with Walking Dead or with that same premise of Walking Dead. That same idea of that really. That whatever's trying to kill you that is is has afflicted the country or afflicted the world is not your biggest problem. Your biggest problem are other people who are trying to take advantage survive. of, yeah, and try to survive on limited resources. Yeah, it's, so. it's just it's just so bad that everybody instead of banding together and saying, "Hey, let's try to group together and put this country back together," it's like, "Oh, we don't. You're not in our group, so we're just going to kill you." Right. Right. You know, and and there was one scene. Uh, I think it was. Might have been in the DLC where where you know that that topic comes up, you know, and it's just well, <laughs> what do you think we were gonna do when you were shooting at us? <laughs> you know, sorry, some some of your friends got killed, but you know, you're gonna shoot at us, you know, you're gonna shoot back, and um, but yeah, dark depressing story, good story, uh, very surprised. At the uh, the fourteen year old girl there, Ellie, the, she played a good part. The voice acting was real good. Um, and usually, kids in games are annoying, but boy, she she yeah she played the 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 kid adult line very well. Yeah. Um, just it was sometimes you'd be just walking around and you hear that going like dan 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 dan. <laughs> yeah. Song. That was so cool because that's what teenagers would do. That you know. <laughs> But then there's other times that she stepped up as like the adult and took charge of a situation, you know. Right. It was she kept going back and forth, and it was just really well done. I liked how uh, uh, who was I talking to last night? The same guy at the rink there, uh, this guy Jay, and he says, uh, "What I didn't like is how if you were hiding from somebody and the girl was like running around you, she'd like run right in front of the guy, but wouldn't get spotted." Right. And I was yeah. like, "Well, I said, yeah, that was kind of weird." But I said, "I did like that because it didn't punish you." For the AI, because you, you were sneaking around and she's kind of following you, so it didn't punish you. Right. If you made the move and ran out, it would see yeah. you. But if the AI kind of goofed up, it wouldn't make a big deal about it. So it says, I, I actually preferred it that way than the computer giving you away. So I says, I had no problem with that. Um, as as uh, I think it was uh, Yaga, we were talking on, on Twitter a little bit. Um, winter was very frustrating. It just... 
was too much. I thought mm-hmm. winter was too much. I won't say on that, but I, I, the winter was probably my least favorite pot. It was very, very bleak, uh, depressing. It, it was just too much, and it just you know it was it yeah. Was, and the guy that 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 kidnapped Ellie. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, Kevin but, Bolware says, as a NOLA resident who lived through Katrina, I'm sorry to tell you, Goalie, but that is real life. Yeah, I imagine it is. And that, that's why it's so depressing is that you see, you know, it's like you're coming down the hill. And it's like, oh, there's, oh, let's, we we got to kill that guy. We don't know who he is. We got to kill him. We don't want to find out who he is or what he is or what he's got or what he knows. We're just going to kill him. Right. It's, it's just that's just the mentality. And it's so frustrating. Yeah. And the thing is that it becomes learned. As you yeah. as you find out from watching these post apocalyptic shows, whether it's television or or games, is that if you're the nice person, you're gonna get fucked. So you're gonna learn not to be the nice person and so, not to trust people. But w- winter was left for dead too. <laughs> <laughs> I had a hell of a time in winter as well. Too much, and I put on easy. I don't think yeah. I would have got through on any other mode. I played the whole game on easy. And yeah, was winter a- was really a bitch when you couldn't see anything and you were trying to get out of the fort was- when you were playing Ellie. Ugh. It was more than just the the wave after wave after wave after wave. It was like talking left- about that wave in the bridge. It was, it was just a few things. It was just like, come on, you know. It's like how many of these guys are in this friggin' gang? You know, it's like you know, you kill a hundred and there's a hundred more. It's like, come on, you know. So winter was very frustrating, but um, the, the game itself, the story, the whole bit, uh, you know, the Firefly groups, you know, you don't know if they're good or bad. And um, the whole trek across the country was, was really kind of neat. Uh, yeah. So, I mean, th- that was one of the reasons I bought PS4 over the Xbox One is to play some of the old PlayStation games, hopefully. And this was one of the first one. I uh, did like, like I said, the beginning as I went my rant last week and I explained this week, I explained why it was so difficult to get into this game. But now that I know how to play it, it's fine. I just, like I said, it was just tough jumping right in, not knowing what was going on and, and whatever. Right. But yeah, but, you know, stuck through it. It's still, like I said, the beginning of the game still left a sour taste in my mouth and always will. But the game in general, uh, yeah, as, it's as good as everybody said. And it just took me a long time to 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 get the the menus, the controls, the crafting, and you know, then it was then I was like, oh, it's it's like Dead Island. I get it now. I can upgrade this. I can upgrade that. You can you know faster reload. All this other stuff. It finally made sense. And once it, once it made sense, it was good. It just took a long time to make sense. More than anything, I think it's just the controller layout. We're not used to it. We're so used to the the Call of Duties, the the Halos type of controller settings. When we get to something like this, where everything's a little bit different. Uh, one thing I didn't like about it is how you reload it the same way you pull the trigger. Most other games, you press another button to reload. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's weird. You have to zoom to shoot. You know, right. Yeah, there's a lot of it. I think overall, despite its some of its flaws, and I think that those will be much better in Last of Us Two because you know there's going to be a Last of Us Two. Yeah, uh, yeah, I think they're probably going to improve some of those things. And also remember that this was a PS3 game that turned into a PS4 game. I would imagine that it'll probably let be a lot smoother for you. Did you ever play the DLC for it? Nope. The Last of Us? Nope. Oh. Never played the you, DLC. Okay. That. How you was it? You play it. Yeah. You need to play it. Yes. It's, um, it kind of bridges a gap in Ellie's story oh. that it's very interesting. Uh, if you want, uh, later off of the show, I'll give you my... Actually, you don't have the game, and I bought it. So what? I always say you could probably get it, get it that way, but no. No, I didn't buy the remastered. I no, saw no reason. I mean, so I already played it through, so I could yeah. always puck back up my PS3 and do it, but meh. I may or may not. It's kind of a down... I'm in a slump, man. I have done no gaming. I've done zero Zero gaming. I went on to Mass Effect 3. I played some multiplayer Mass Effect 3. Just pick up, not even with friends, just pick up games. And I did that for, I think, one night or two nights. And then I've been watching Crunchyroll on the PS4. And just (laughs) killing some of the anime on Crunchyroll. That's it. Just watching anime. 
So yeah, I'm I'm I have nothing to add to this conversation no. today. I played the uh the DLC. Uh I forget what it's called now. Um yeah, Left Behind. Left Behind. It's more of it, it really focuses on Ellie. Yeah. And it does uh, flashbacks between uh, her growing up with her friend uh, and then, you know, flashbacks to, uh, you know, flash forward to, you know, the winter scene, basically. Or right before the winter scene, right after, um, you know, the guy gets hurt. Uh, that's all I'm going to say. But uh, it's it's very story driven. It's a lot of walking and, and listening and learning. Mm-hmm. And then it goes from that to Left 4 Dead 2. <laughs> And then it goes back to walking and, and learning the story, and then it, another left for did too. So it 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 really didn't have a very good balance. It was either boring out of your mind, I thought, or just way way too over the top. And right. it took me a long time to get through some of the battles because it just was again wave after wave after wave. Like come on, but um, yeah, I, I didn't care for the DLC at all, at all. It added a little bit to the story, but for the most part, I. You, you probably like it because you're very story driven, but mm-hmm. it is very story driven. The action part was way over the top, and then, then like I say, it went from from zero to fifty way too fast. Yeah. Um, but you know, it was more more of the story, which was which was kind of cool, I guess. Um, it just it was almost like it was it was like a light version of the game. Right. Didn't find a lot of stuff. There was there wasn't any really crafting stuff to pick up, stuff to do. It was just kind of walking and listening, and then. Running out of ammo and trying to figure out how to kill people out of ammo. It's just, uh, right. yeah. But the, uh, so, but the game itself was really good. Pispo, what do you think of the DLC? I, I well, I enjoyed it, and it, like I said, it's well, you said it right. It's story driven, and that's one of the things that, uh, which you kind of found out a little bit about Ellie's situations towards the end of the game with her friend. She she kind of opens up about that. So it was it was nice to to see exactly what actually happened, um, and then the part where you kept going back and forth, back and forth. It was just a flashback moment. She's reliving stuff that happened back then to her current situation. I honestly I enjoyed it. It was you're right. It is short. It is just a chapter, like every other other one's just a chapter. But I wouldn't mind doing it again. Yeah, not me. Um, so anything else that you did other than, uh, Last of Us? <laughs> yes. I was so, uh, oh, first off, can I just say, I would like to thank MLB The Show for getting me another part-time job. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? No joke. No okay. joke. All right, so you, you see me, um, you know, posting some some of the pictures from the the MLB the Show baseball game from PS4, right? And right. every once in a while, I post like an old picture of an old Red Sox or a close play at the plate or something. Just you know, I find fun things to post, just like I did with Last of Us. I I put all the hockey posters in Last of Us and kept posting them just just for fun. So anyway, this guy in Facebook posts. He's seen all my Facebook uh, baseball posts and he goes, he's like, uh, Dave, this is a job right up your alley. One of the local baseball teams here, like a small inner city league here in Massachusetts. Uh, one of the teams was looking for a PA announcer at the at the ballpark. <laughs> <laughs> and I kiddingly said, "Boy, yeah, you know, I something I might be interested." in. the guy in the team, one of the coaches, contacts me on Facebook. And said, Can you come down Sunday afternoon at four o'clock? And I show up, and he sits me in front of the mic and goes, "There you go. Here's the roster." <laughs> awesome. No <laughs> way. Yep. So here I go. Now batting. Number three, Corey O'Neill. <laughs> O'Neill. <laughs> and uh, I did it for the whole game, and I play a little bit of music, and they're like, yeah, can you come back Thursday? And then, <laughs> <laughs> this season with us? That's awesome. <laughs> so I'm now the PA announcer of this local baseball team. Might as well plug them. What's the name of the team? Uh, it's the Melrose Americans. Uh-huh. They play uh, in the inner city baseball league here in Massachusetts. There's like seven or eight teams. There wasn't a lot of people at the park, but it was kind of neat. I think I posted a picture on Facebook of where I sat. I was in a little booth right behind home. I saw the pictures, and I was like, yeah. oh, that's an interesting thing. I wonder if he's doing it for a friend or something. I didn't realize you got the job through him. <laughs> yeah, so it's, 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 it's not a, like a huge paying job, but it's, you know, so I, was, I just got talking to guys. Like, you guys ever do like any audio, you know, like a, a radio thing for the game? They're like, can you do that? I'm like, 
Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we'll live version of the game on Spreaker for you. <laughs> so, actually, so that poses a question to me that I was talking before the show. I got the iPhone 5 or whatever it is. Now, with Spreaker, if you get a phone call, it disrupts your speaker feed. Spreaker feed, okay? Mm -hmm. How can I turn off the incoming calls yet keep the data flowing so I could broadcast a baseball game and if you, if like somebody called me uh, it, it is Wi-Fi. under no no yes you could do that the uh, min, uh, yeah no Wi-Fi I have no Wi-Fi all right so then the alternate is under settings and I have to look at because I just upgraded my iPhone there's a do not disturb now will that will that just not take the call or will that Take the call, then like shut the call down. Will it disrupt the feed? Now, according to the iPhone itself, when do not disturb is enabled, calls and alerts that arrived will be locked and will be silenced. And a moon icon will appear in the status bar. Okay, so it shouldn't disrupt the feed in theory. Right. I guess I'll have to try it. Right. And you can actually select calls that you will take. I think I did see that, yeah. Out okay. of the man. So if you, and then you could also schedule a time when you are in do not disturb mode. Oh, cool. So you can say, I want to be always on, let's see, I'm looking at my schedule now, from 10 p.m. to 7 a.m. or from like, say, oh, 5 p.m. Yeah. to whatever. It will, it will set it up so that it will only, you can put it on do not disturb and don't have to forget to take it off do not disturb. Yeah. I mean, how, how bad is that that we have a phone and we don't want to use the phone feature? <laughs> uh, yeah. And then um, there is also an option where of repeated calls where you can turn it on or turn it off. But if you have it on, if someone calls you back, the same person calls you back within three minutes of the first call. I saw that. Feature. It won't be silenced. Okay. Yep. Um, so I believe the do not disturb will block your calls and send everything directly to voicemail. Okay, yeah, because that's what I need to do. I need to – I got lucky one time. I did a hockey game, and nobody called me, and I broadcast the whole game, and it went well over Spreaker. But then I was like, oh, man, if somebody called. Yeah. Yeager oh. says airplane mode. No, airplane mode won't work. I don't know why you think I'm smoking. I'm not. Um, uh, airplane mode is – will block oh. it from looking for Wi-Fi, and it will block um, your phone. And you don't want to do that because he wants to be broadcasting yeah, yeah. over Spreaker. Yeah, so I'm That would be bad. Uh, yeah, so I'm thinking I'll uh, I'm gonna try that. Maybe I'll I'll fiddle around with it, just because um, you know it'd be kind of cool to do that. I just don't know if that would no that wouldn't chew up my minutes. That would just be data. That would That'd just be data. Okay, data. Yeah. So, there should be a way of because uh, I was looking at it said you could have call forwarding go to your voicemail, but you can't do it on the phone. You gotta dial in and and do something crazy with it. You know. Yeah. Jaeger says wrong. You turn Wi-Fi on. You're true. You can turn Wi-Fi on and turn yeah, your, yeah. your 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 uh, airplane mode on, and it will block only the the calls, your cell cell connection. But that's what he needs is the cell connection. Yeah, I need the cell data because I don't have a Wi-Fi connection at the ballpark. Yep. Um. So okay, but uh, oh, so sorry, uh, so anyway, so I saw a little bit more of the MLB the show. Thank you for the uh, get picking up that job. It was kind of funny. <laughs> Doing that. How often are you doing it? How how long? How what? How often? How often? Well, I, I did the first one Sunday. Uh, they have games uh, Thursday and Friday this week. Then they have playoffs, and so they want me to to finish out the season and do playoffs. Um, Man, so might- if only you'd have started playing that game sooner. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what I'm doing for right now is I'm kind of doing it, showing what I can do. Uh, maybe I'll do a, a broadcast for them, or, or maybe you know, whatever, and then uh, hopefully like bring something for next year because yeah. they just built the stadium it's it's all brand new in the whole bit and he says the town's all excited about the team this and that and you know anything you can do would help so i'm kind of finishing up the season with them and then hopefully next spring or whatever it is maybe can, you can get them to buy a wi-fi hotspot yeah there you go something like that. yeah yeah because yep, i mean there's only so much that you can do with a cell phone yeah yeah I mean, that, that the speaker app would work pretty good you know but yeah. i'd rather use the ipad app oh yeah absolutely bit so i did that uh but get, getting back to some of the other things i played uh totally uh right after last of us i, I had to go play left for dead one i and saw I, that and why why were you complaining about not playing enough left for dead one i will always play left for dead one i wasn't a play i just said i missed this because i put it on i was playing it on the xbox 
And I actually played one of the DLCs, and I forget what it was called. It was, it only had a couple of chapters in it. You know how they usually had four, they had four chapters, and it was about well, four maps, four chapters in each map. One of these had two, and it wasn't the one that you got to go to the bridge. It was, uh, I, I died in it, actually. I didn't get on the truck at the end because I didn't know where to go. I got lost and, and didn't. But, um, but there was actually people playing. I had live people playing with me. I sat it up, got playing, played one of the DLC maps, and um, instead of playing, I'll have to look to see what what it was called there because there was two additional DLC maps. Oh, what was the one that was? Oh, there was the sacrifice, and then it was the other one. It was the other one that I was playing, and I had live people playing with me, and guys are jumping in and out as you do with Left for Dead, playing and playing until I went to work. But yeah, Left for Dead one. Oh, that is such a good, a good game. Oh, I love. Anytime Left you want to play that, let's let me know. Send me a message. Send me a text. I'll play. Yeah, I was. I was like right before work uh, last night, I think it was. So I, uh, I just played for a little bit before I went out. Yep. But I was all excited about that. So that, that's basically what I've been playing. Finished up the Last of Us, all the DLC, MLB, and uh, for Dead One. I don't think there's anything else I, I really did play. And uh, Piss Boy, what you been playing? Um, just Last of Us. That's pretty much the only one I've been okay. playing. I've been uh, watching some Netflix uh, Knights of Sidonia, which is pretty pretty good. Mm-hmm. Uh, um, that's the Netflix original one that they have, which is kind of funny since it's made in Japan. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> and um, that's about it. There's other than gaming, I'm just waiting for Diablo to come out in yeah. the streets. Yeah. Okay. You know, we were talking before. So, okay. So here's the thing we were talking to before. And, um, we got to talk about it on the show. So hold on a second before you do, Goalie, You're running hot. You're distorting. Okay. Sorry. Sorry to do this. Technical he got excited. Stuff. He got yeah. excited. Yeah. <laughs> he always checks himself. He goes, "How do I sound? I sound great. All right." So anyway, <laughs> <laughs> let me tell you about Law for Dad. <laughs> All right. How do I sound now? You sound much better, actually. A lot better. I turned it down. A lot better now. No distortion. No uh, distortion. Fabulous. Uh, Yell your uh, heart out. I turned down my main. Mm, main. Before the show about uh, Diablo 3, uh, Reaper of Souls coming for PS4. And uh, I was talking to Piss Boy. It's like, you know, I'm really tempted to buy the digital version. But at the same time, I really like having the disc. I just like having it so I can either lend it out or go to a friend's. Or in six months, maybe I trade it in if I'm done with it. So, But you were saying I should get. The D, uh, the digital version versus the disc version. So why? The reason why is because both you and Mrs. Goldie are going to play for it together. Just buy one copy just for yourself uh, under the main one, which will probably be set up to hers, and download the other copy to the secondary PlayStation, and both you can play at the same time just by one copy. Oh, I don't think you can do that. Mm, yes. No. Nine no. times out of ten, Piss Boy is right. Okay, now here's his He line. is the one person on the show that does not talk completely out of his ass. All right, let me tell you about this. So I downloaded, uh, I bought some digital games. Okay. okay. Um, I'm trying to think uh, which one I bought. Okay, uh, the, the King Oddball. Okay, mm-hmm. that, little, that little arcade game I bought. Right, so I bought that on my PS4. I actually loaded it on her PS4. And if I try to play... On her screen name, on her PS4, it says, I'm not authorized to play King Oddball. No, but do you have your name already linked to it? Do you have your account already linked? You have to download it on yours and have your account because under the settings, it says primary uh, uh, PlayStation. The primary one, that's where you download your games from. The secondary one, that's the one you could actually go ahead and come in. Like you go into a friend's house, you could download it through there. And have the other person, as long as your account's still there active, the other person will be able to play your game. It only works for two PlayStations. But you can you play it simultaneously? I believe you could. I, I saw. So I'm trying to follow this now. So I have on her PlayStation, she's got her account, and I can log out and log in on my account, okay? You can log yourself. You could have both accounts active at the same time. So uh, where, when you go under the the screen uh, where you where you put in one controller, two controllers, it actually asks for which account you want active. Yep. You could lo- you could activate your account and have her play, 
you know, by having her account there, as long as the game is there, you both should be able to play it with her account playing yours, and then you go to your own uh, PlayStation and play it that way. Okay, uh, but but again, my, my my question is, is that that arcade game that I downloaded on her system, it wouldn't play under her name? Well, we could... Um, Edie, if you want, after the show, uh, you uh, you could you could log one of my accounts or well, my name into your place uh, okay, PlayStation. Okay, we'll test it. But, yeah, and we'll test it out to see if it works. Because my understanding, it should work. Because yeah, said I'm not authorized because I was on her name, even though I downloaded the game. Now maybe it, it's I got to sign under your under yes. yours. Okay, so maybe if I deleted it, signed in under my name, and downloaded download it from yours. Name, and then I signed out and went into her name. It might work that way. Yes, I guess I will try. We'll that. see. We'll we'll yeah. test it be- out. Be- because on on the regular PS3, um, I actually had lent my neighbor my PS3 account, and I downloaded whatever games she wanted, and she could actually play it under her account. I mean, just have my games under her hard drive. Okay, yeah, because I, I guess maybe it's all on how you initially download it then, because. I know that I, I I can play it under my name. So if I sign her out and sign me in on her PlayStation, I can play it. And that's how I do play it. Kevin Bulware says, can you log into two consoles simultaneously? I believe you could. Okay. And Squeegee asks, sorry I'm late to the conversation, but this sounds like Steam account sharing. Yeah, similar to Steam account sharing, but it's only good for one other person. Steam is for multiple people. Right. Yeah, so we'll test it out later on today, Edie. You'll see. You'll see. All right, all right. We'll 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 play around with it. We will get back to you next week. Um. So. Uh. Anyway. Uh. So. Here's here's another uh, thing to consider: is it if you're gonna need to buy two account two copies anyway, right? Yeah. Do you really gonna... need to buy two disc copies? I'd say buy one that's digital, and buy one that's disc. I thought about that too, because if you can you buy the digital, and it doesn't work, you can share it. Great, you just saved yourself sixty five bucks. If you can't do it, then you can always go out and get the the hard the disc, and you've got the disc version. This is true. So I mean, I could try the digital one first, and then if not, go out and get the other one. I, right. I guess. Um, I I do want to try it though. I do want to you know because I do have some games that I bought on my system that I would like to figure out how to make work on hers. Yeah. Then and, I, and here's the thing that I, that um, has always been my argument because I love dig, uh, digital downloads is that, you know, you're going to play that game. You're never going to stop playing that game. You're going to keep, yes. it's going to be like left for dead. You are going to keep playing well, that game I, all the time. Well, so it's, it's, you're never, you're not going to sell it. It's just yeah, going it, to be a big thing of plastic in your house that you have to dispose of later. But it did, it, it did fade out after a few months. Sure. Yes, but there's a new character. It's uh, this is the uh, there's going to be new stuff in there. Um, I forgot the name of the character. I forgot. I'm just wondering, uh, though, now I'm starting to doubt myself with this game because we played it to death. What eight months ago, nine months ago? Yeah. And now, since we've already played it, it's not going to be new again. And even though there's newer, things oh, to- you're going to want to play it. And not only that, because there's going to be more people that are going to be playing it all the time, you're going to want to. Pick it up and play it even more so because there's going to be more people to play it with. And I, drop in, drop out. Drop in, drop out. Yeah. yeah. That's why I thought about going digital because this is one of those I know I really like. You're never going to sell it. You're never going to sell that disc. By the time you get around to selling that disc, it's not even worth selling it at that point. That's the, Well, that's what I was thinking too. It's like Even if I got, what, 15 to 20 bucks for it in a few months, that's... What, You're not going to sell it in a few months. It's going to be six or eight months before you sell that game. Yeah, and then it's, uh, yeah, and then it's I, gonna have I, zero value anyway. You're gonna sell it for five bucks. But the problem is though, again with the digital stuff is, um, you know, if I keep putting everything digital, it's gonna fill up the hard drive. So then if I delete something, so let's say I delete it, and then you guys want to play, well, I gotta spend you know eight to ten hours re-download. Well, the whole I thing. say I say in this case, in this limited case for you, I don't have a problem filling up my hard drive at all, and I don't have a problem deleting a game that I don't play because there's tons of games that I'll have that I don't play anymore. And if I decide to play it again, I don't have a problem with re-downloading it. Not an issue. But in for you, 
in this limited case, it is worthwhile to put it on your hard drive. Yeah, this game, yeah, this game is probably this is going to be the- worthwhile to have on your hard drive because you're going to play it so much and because you're going to frequently revisit it. Like I wouldn't say every game should be on your hard drive. Assassin's Creed, it shouldn't no. be on my hard drive. But if I had, say, for example, Mass Effect 3 for PlayStation 4, I'd definitely put that on my hard drive because yeah. I do go back to it on a pretty regular basis. Like once, twice a month, I'll play it. Yeah, no, no, you're right. That's It's definitely a go-to game. It's a go-to game. This is this is going to be have a long life for you. So just, just get, a, get one copy digital download, and if you're really, really into having the disc in your hand, go get the second one disc. I'm interested in what Piss Boy said, though. Is you know I might try that. I might actually, when we get done the show, go fiddle around upstairs, uh, maybe delete some of the games, and then go on my account, re-download them, and see if I can play on her account. That would be really cool. Piss boy, what are you doing? You're like squirming like a three year old. We can hear it. I am. Yes. Sorry. <laughs> yes, yes, you are. Your that. your mic is not a unidirectional mic. It's an omnidirectional mic. So it every time you move, it sounds like you're like a three year old squirming yeah, in his chair. Scratch your balls. We hear it. We hear the scratch. <laughs> Nick never. Nick doesn't have balls to scratch, so we don't have. To right. <laughs> He's like a Ken doll. <laughs> it's nice having three guys on the show today, isn't it? Yeah, I know. It is, isn't it? <laughs> Uh, hey, anyway, um, speaking of the, the trade-in, I checked it that into that pl- the PlayStation Now. Oh. Okay? I, I just went – I just poked around, and I'm going to try it. I haven't tried it yet, but I think I'm going to give it a- that. I no, poked around yes. in it, and I saw the prices. Yes. Fuck right. that. Did, did, did I tell you they were ridiculous? A ridiculous. No, not ridiculous, but let me, let, me, let me throw this wrinkle at you. Okay. Here's a wrinkle. I was listening to a couple other shows, and they were talking about it. And it's the same thing. It's way too expensive. What, four hours for three bucks? Screw that. If they were to make it a, a one to two days for three or four bucks, that's basically a red box rental. Yeah, that I would do. Yep, that that I would definitely do too. But here's the other thing. So I looked at one, and they said it was 25 bucks. for Let me guess. It was probably Dead Island. Wh- whatever it was. I, I, don't I, looked, I looked up Dead Island. Yep. There was a couple that you, you can do a month and 90 days. And yeah, and the, the 90 days was $15 more than buying it outright on Amazon brand new. But now here's, here's, here's the, the two things that to keep in mind. Number one, I don't have a PS3, so right. I can't play these games. So if I want to play them, this is how I got to do right. it. Right, and that's the way that they've got you by the t- theoretically by the short curlies. The other thing is, it, it, now the, the year old games, yeah, I'm not a big fan of. But if there's any way that, that you know, especially the the sports games or the stuff that comes out every year, you know, if if I could play one of them for ninety days for twenty five bucks, I come out ahead. So right, but they're not going to put their new games. This is they're going to put their old catalog up there. So it really depends what's on there because if right, uh, let's just say they had the like in. Oh, I was trying to think. If okay. they had the Uncharted games on there, that would be a really good deal, yeah. especially for someone like you because they've had so many people that have never played Uncharted games because they were Xbox people. Yeah, and they no, came no, over to the PlayStation Four. That would have been smart, but they didn't yeah. do that. Yeah, because, well, I'm hoping they go that way because, and I'm not sticking up for the prices. I think they're terrible. But if you're telling me I can rent a game for 25 bucks for 90 days, okay, mm-hmm. I'm thinking a game like Uncharted is probably going to be very similar to Last of Us. Yeah. Where I'm going to, if it's just a single player campaign, more or less. I know it, is, it is. It is a yeah. single. Yeah, there's some multiplayer in yeah. the last one, but it was all right. It's made a multiplayer. So you're not going to play the multiplayer. You know? Yeah. So, so. If it's they put something like the Uncharted series on there, and I would could play it on my PS4 for for you know, and I didn't have to load it onto my hard drive, mm-hmm. and I could stream it, and it was twenty five bucks instead of buying it. Like I say, you can still buy it used, probably a little cheaper, but I can say I don't want to go buy a PS3 to play this game. So would I spend twenty now, after ninety days? I'm not going to be. I'm maybe thirty days wouldn't even be playing this game. Right, thirty days so, is probably more like. So it. if I could play a game like Uncharted for twelve or thirteen bucks and have it for a month, as as expensive as that is, that's, it's worth it, right? Because it's not available as a PS4 game. Yes, absolutely. It, Couldn't agree with you more. Something I'm not going to go buy or rent a PS3 just to play this one game. 
Uh, it might be worth checking, but you know, it's it's something where I do kind of wish they gave the option of buying something fairly inexpensive so you could have it like mm -hmm. uh, Live does. But but again, look, I I can almost see where they're going with this, where it's like you're really some of these games you're really not going to want to play after a month or after three months. They're not because they're older games. Mm -hmm. They they don't have the same staying power as the newer games. Mm -hmm. So I think that might have been their uh, their theory behind all this. Black Sphere Voice says Diablo Three. You're going to play that game like I play on Minecraft. <laughs> yes, yeah. you are. He is, and I don't know why he's fighting it so hard. <laughs> And he also points out that you could put the games on an external hard drive or USB memory stick. Oh yeah, that's true. Too. Yeah, there's that's a, that's very compelling, especially or, the external or, hard drive. Or swap out your hard drive. Right. Or swap that right. I'll do that eventually when I need to. No, I'm not that works for any, any um any USB stick. Is it going to be a special one? Nope. Or? No. That's the beauty of the PlayStation Four. Nothing proprietary. So I could get what a thirty-two byte stick or something and just throw it on there uh, yeah i suppose and yep. you can just swap, swap back and swap forth, back right? and forth yep oh okay oh i'm liking that i think i don't think that can you play a game from your i don't think so hard, yeah i think you'll have to load it from the stick right, but, but then you don't have to download it um but a, a transfer from a stick is going to be a heck of a lot faster. faster right so yeah so i guess you could you could get, get some sort of a memory stick and mm. uh Throw some games on. We'll there keep we'll keep you moving slowly towards the future. Don't you worry about that. I am. Mama's got you. I am. It's, it's it, it is scary moving out of the seventies. <laughs> I get that. Yeah. Remember, <laughs> I had a floppy disk. Now I have a hard drive. <laughs> I don't get it. Where's my pants? I remember I had a Star Wars chess game for one of my first computers. It was like a 486DX or something <laughs> like that way back in the day. And this this is before CDs, okay? So it was just floppy drives. Uh -huh. The install on this was like 28 discs. <laughs> oh my. You would sit there one at a time and take it out, put in disc two, and then up to disc 27. And you are just installing this Star Wars chess game. And it moved so slow because my computer barely handled it. And it chomped up the entire hard drive. So if I wanted to do anything else, I'd have to delete the game. <laughs> if I wanted to play again, I'd have to reload all 26 floppies. It was awesome. Uh, so we were, I was talking about it with Kevin the other day about how when we went back when we started on the uh, Commodore, you'd have the tape drive. It was a tape, essentially. I don't know. if I think we're all old enough to remember those days. Maybe you aren't. But I yeah, the, your drive was essentially an audio tape. You know, like the tape that they have for Awesome Mix uh, and Guardians of the Galaxy, Awesome Mix number one. Yeah, that's the tape that you use to save your game. And what you would do is you'd start up your computer and then you'd want to load a game. So you'd stick the game's tape into the player, close it up, hit play, and then you'd go make, like, go outside and play or have lunch. You essentially would have, it would take probably an hour or change to load the game from that. So you would essentially just have to make a decision of whatever game you were going to play for the day. <laughs> Like an hour or so before ahead of time. So then you go, you know, start loading it, go have lunch, maybe go outside and play, then come back and play it. <laughs> Crazy. Um, so Oh, somebody said I missed the Sierra install messages. A uh, little bit of trivia. I was out flying my drones this weekend, um, at a little drone event that we had in the neighborhood just bunch of us just all getting together and flying drones and one of the guys that i met who is a drone head like us was the head of sierra online wow back in the leisure suit larry phantasmagoria days and i found that out and i almost like hugged him saying i loved phantasmagoria it changed my life and now i'm the video game podcaster and here it's causing you but yeah he's he was head of sierra at that point and Lives over in Marin and comes over to Point Richmond to fly drones. And I'm like, you're awesome. <laughs> so, yes, Black Star Boy, Game of Drones. No, that was not the Game of Drones. That was uh, the FPV Explorers. So that's uh, another little group that gets together. Uh, so, all right. Well, uh, shall we hit the news? Sure. Let's hit the news. Wait, wait. Oh, crap. Oh. Uh, hold oh. on. Uh, and there we go. Oh, 
So the, the music has been delayed, much like many of the games we were supposed to play. <laughs> <laughs> this is the wait. Hold on a second. This is the Game House News Views commentary on the Week in Gaming with Gamerini, Holy Goalie, and Piss Boy. We need a whole new segment called "What Has Been Delayed." What delayed and- now? <laughs> Where are they now? So, uh, can we just say Evolve has evolved into a modern day video game? Push back now. 2015. To February. Yep. February is going to be a busy month for 2014. Games. I, you know what's really funny is that, so who was it that, that pushed off of the 9th or September 9th or whenever it was, which was the day that was going to be the $120 day or the $200 day because everything was releasing on, you know, three or four games, four or five games, big games were all releasing on the same day and then somebody moved off of that date. They should have just stayed because all those games are now getting delayed. Yeah, yeah. No up next year. Like right. No. What? What? I got the list right here. Hang on a After all of this, there's going to be literally nobody coming out on the ninth now. That was uh, <laughs> that was what the the ninth of September. Yeah, ninth of September. Yeah, that was uh, Destiny NHL. Um, well, those are the only two on the ninth that I saw. Uh, there was another one coming up. I thought it was in. Uh... No, it was in October, wasn't it? Yeah, it was October. Was it October? No, October seventh. No October seventh. Yeah, we got a uh, NBA Two K Fifteen, Dragon Age Inquisition, Right Dr- Club, Middle Earth, Shadow of Mordor, Alien Isolation. That's NBA- what it is. The three hundred dollar day. There we are. I found it. Yeah. Uh, so October seventh, and then. Two weeks after that was Evolve. Evolve was coming out on the 21st with Evil Within, Battlefield Hardline, Just Dance, Samurai Warriors uh, 4. So those are the big ones coming out for the PS4. That's just PS4. That's just my list for PS4. I don't have the uh, the Xbox One in front of me. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, one big day in uh, September, another big day in October. But now that Evolve is out of the, uh, the equation, well, actually Evolve was And I think Inquisition also moved off of that. Wasn't that the one that we reported on last week? I can't remember. That, oh boy. Uh, somebody moved off of the seventh um, to like a month later because of that. It might have been. I think it was in- Inquisition that was delayed, and of course I don't have my notes. Well, I guess you guys in the chat room, you'll remember, or go to our website uh, and and look it up. Since well, I guess I could look it up. No, I want to make you work. You, my minions, please tell me what was the game that moved off of October seventh? I think it was last week or two weeks ago. Uh, be Dragon Age because I'm looking. It, it, I think it is Dragon Age. NBA yes. and Drive Club. I don't know. It wasn't Drive Club. <laughs> I don't <laughs> drive, no, club. drive Club. I think if Drive Club delays one more time, there's going to be a riot. <laughs> uh, middle, it wasn't Middle Earth Shadow of Mordor. No, no, no. It wasn't Middle yeah. Earth. No, it's late middle. NBA Live. And it was not NBA. I wouldn't have reported on that. So yeah, no, it was. It was Dragon Age. Yeah. Yeah. Um. So yeah. Uh, what else got delayed? Where else are they now? Oh boy! What else got delayed? There was something else. Uh, all right, you'll think of it. We'll, we'll, we'll find it. Uh, uh, so, what about GameStop changing their prices? Huh? Yes, I saw that. Yeah, tell us more. Uh, I'm checking out. All right, come on, piss boy! I, I expect it. I more. Of you have it, have it at the at ready. All right, then all moved on while piss boy's looking that up. If you pre-ordered Ghost Edition for Destiny. You may want to call the retailer that you bought it from because according to multiple reports on Reddit and was also reported as a story on VG24, uh, 24-7, many retailers like Best Buy and GameStop are calling customers the, who paid the $149, $149 special edition and bought the pre-order for it. They're calling them and telling them that their order has been canceled. The reason why is because the Ghost Edition is in short supply. Apparently, the demand is so outstripping the supply that um, retailers have oversold their allocations. So right now, if you've got one of those on pre-order, double check that you still have it on pre-order and keep your eye on it. Because apparently it is going to be a quote-unquote collector's edition. Some people are selling these pre-orders Confirmed pre-orders for the Ghost Edition on eBay right now. I've heard they're selling them for like five hundred bucks. No, one went over a thousand already. Really? Yes. Wow. So yeah, double check. And if you have one, you might want to think about selling it on eBay. Um, on the other the other side of the news is that if you have bought the other two, the limited edition, which is the one that I bought, 
Uh, or if you bought the regular standard edition, there's no shortage of that because, of course, oh, what's making it short is all the plastic tat that comes along with it. Okay, no, the uh, the limited edition one, uh, not the one with the ghost. It's already sold out. You can't buy that anymore. The the hundred the hundred dollar one, the one you got, but the actual uh, hard copy that's already gone. Oh yeah, the hard yeah. copy's gone. You can always get the digital one, right? Yeah. Um. So yeah. Uh. Keep your eyes on that. Um. Let's see. What was it? Uh. uh Stephen in the chat room says Shadows of Mordor is actually pulled forward from October seventh to September thirtieth. Oh, yeah. He has something to pull pull up a week. Yeah. Okay. So all fifteen people that buy that. Oh, he points out that all these games being delayed, but nobody has heard of that Mordor is actually coming early. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so what's this about GameStop changing prices? Um, they're they're non trading and checking the whole store right now. Here, all right, post link right now. They, well, all right, well, you some of the uh, the the fluff. They're going to a straight straight fee, you know. Yeah. Trade, yeah straight straight up trade. That they, they used to have, you know, if you did this, you get ten percent more. If you did this, you did ten percent more. Now they, they're kind of streamlining it, so you don't get all these little tiny little bonuses. It's a straight. What did you mean? Like, what would you get a ten percent bonus for? Because I don't sell this, sell this stuff. So, oh boy, um, I did. I did see. Okay, I think you put it up in the chat. All yeah. right, yeah. really? Yeah. You're gonna do it in the chat room? If you're gonna be on the show, you gotta read the news, motherfucker. Yeah, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So now I have to find which of these windows is open that has this goddamn link so that i can read the news no 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 you don't seem to understand if you're sitting in that well, chair it, you're it, it, bringing the news it's like if you put stuff towards a pre-order you get a bonus Things okay like that. all right you know if you if you trade it in this or that you get a bonus so uh -huh. um th so now it's uh instead of all these little bump ups in your trade it's going to be a flat flat fee across the board don't know if it's going to be better or worse huh. it depends on your game i guess it is Okay. But well, like somebody said, so instead of getting 59 cents, you'll get 89 cents for a game. All right. Well, That's, for them it's probably a big deal and they'll they'll make a big deal out of out of how much more you're going to get for your trade in, but I I really don't think it's going to be anything crazy. Let's see. It's going to launch on August 18th, and according to a report in Kotaku, it's going to simplify the trade in structure, but it also may end up returning more money to you. You're no longer going to have to put your money toward pre-orders or promotions in order to get the most bang for your buck. And I'm reading straight out of it. Instead, any games you sell to GameStop will come at a flat rate, only varying if you want cash instead of credit. And um, Kotaku has posted a very handy-dandy um, uh, graph to show you how much it is. I don't know. I, I think it's a good idea because I really hated the idea that... Essentially, they weren't giving you a 10% bonus if you did a pre-order. What they were doing is they were cutting the return price for you if you didn't make a pre-order. Yes. So hopefully this will mean that you will end up getting more credit without having to jump through a bunch of hoops, which is, I guess, a good thing. We'll see. I mean, you, you'll just, it may be that they've just slashed all the prices and now they're no longer giving you the credit. But we'll see. That's... In the air at the moment. Hey, uh, someone was uh, on um, uh, was on Twitter or Facebook. Somebody was talking about the uh, Diablo three coming out for uh, the new systems, and it was not going to be supported by Blizzard. That mm -hmm. if there was an issue with cheaters or patches, they were basically were throwing this out and they were abandoning it. No, actually, no, I think I read a review on that. No. The only thing that I've heard, and I was going to bring this up, this was going to be my next item. It was on GameStop. They, they, somebody put a review. either GameStop or Amazon. Somebody reviewed, you know, they have a review for the game, and it says, I'm not buying it for the PS4 because I heard Blizzard is not going to support it. They're throwing it out, and they're washing their hands of it. So if anything needs to be fixed. Now, this is just what one person wrote. I would not believe that. No way would I believe that. Because here's why. If you... The the patch, the new patch for Diablo 3, for the PS3 and the 360, is going to include 
an update that will add a cloud save feature. And that cloud save feature is going to allow you to transfer, right, to transfer your data across platform generations, which means that you will be able to transfer your data from an Xbox 360 to an Xbox One. It will also allow you to, cro to cross uh, platform generations across brands. So you will be able to transfer your data from a 360 to a PlayStation 4. The only thing you will not be able to do is you will not be able to make a transfer from a 360 to a PS3, essentially within the same last generation uh, consoles. You could pretty much you you upscale up, not down. Right, or up but not across. Yeah. Um. So yeah, if if they were not going to support it, why would they be worried about you transferring your character to the PlayStation Four? That's not going to be part of it. That's not no no no. Mm. no. Yeah, I was on GameStop actually. It says uh. I was looking forward to it, but Blizzard just announced they are debating if they're even going to support the game. No, uh, you know, you, you cannot trust. I don't trust absolutely anything that I read in a forum unless I have sourced it. In fact, I just picked up a story just now that came out about Fallout 4's release date, latest rumors, and all of that. I am but not reporting it. You know why? Because my the only sources that I could find that reported on it were the Christian Post, the Ecumenical News, and K Drama Stars. Oh, here's another one. Yeah, no, but here's another one. The same in the same area here. Some somebody else posted the same thing. Somebody says, else who? Just users. Users just, are idiots. We're I'm, morons. We're fucking morons. But you know, again, you know, this is something I want to keep an eye on. Right. Absolutely. I what I would do it's is awesome. I would check if, that if, out. If there's more than one person saying he found out the Blizzard might not support this, either there's a bad rumor going on. Or I was, would ask him. I would post to the forum where you're getting your source so I can check that out. It, it is an old game. You know, let, let's just let's cut right to the chase. It's not a new game, so it has Blizzard, you know, it got pushed back, now they're putting it out, and it's like, okay, now we're done with this? It could be. I don't think so. Nope. No. Nope. And, and first of all, um, especially after selling 20 million copies since it launched, I doubt that they're doing anything, especially, oh, that's the only thing that's actually making a uh, good amount of money for Blizzard right now, especially from all the uh, subscriptions drops from World of Warcraft. World of Warcraft, yeah. World of Warcraft subscriptions have hit an all-time low. Yeah. yeah. That's so, um. so for them saying they're not going to support this for the new consoles, I doubt. I think what I honestly think is that there might be some features that might not be supported right now because they might be a uh, review copy. But I don't think it, to be completely not supported, I doubt that. Right. And uh, they're going to add a new character, apparently. They're or adding a new character to D Diablo 3. Crusader, yeah. Right. Why would they be adding a new character if they're intending to just dump it and walk away? No. Yes, these these guys are full of uh, the, the, well, bullshit. I below this says that um, women over 35 are not going to be allowed to play this game. <laughs> <laughs> You know, and, and if that was the case, Blizzard would go out of business. <laughs> Quite honestly. I know. Is, is Nick over 35? No. no. Nick said, oh, okay. Nick's like 12. No, Nick is, I think he's 26 or 27. Is he, older than Ellie? is he older than Ellie? He's slightly older than Ellie, but not much. So he's he's close. closer to Ellie's age than we are to his. How about that? If he, yeah. if he Ellie, it wouldn't be creepy. Huh? <laughs> It would. It okay. might be a little. It's a little bit. It's. It's. Yeah. It's. Just, it's a bit skeevy. Yeah, I would say it's a bit skeevy. I. I, I think Ellie's more manly than. than she Nick. definitely. Yeah. She's not. <laughs> Ellie would kick lot. Nick's she ass. Lied about her age. I can spot an eighteen-year-old a mile away. Just <laughs> saying. <laughs> next. Uh, next. Hang on. There's a knock um, on the door. <laughs> <laughs> Listening in? Well, we could talk about the World of Warcraft lost eight hundred thousand subscribers in the last three months. Yeah. Wow. Oh, yeah. That's a lot. Yeah. Yes, that is a lot. Um, now there are six point eight million subscribers, uh, which which goes towards uh, Diablo. How they have sold, reached twenty million copies. So yeah, they've just been losing them. Uh, and apparently, they're going to be holding a event here um, in the next couple months because they're going to be releasing their new expansion, uh, Warlords of Dermore. 
mm-hmm. um, which uh, comes in in fall, which they are suspecting. Um, 1.5 million units have already been pre-ordered already, so it might boost a little jump for them, but that's still... I mean, You know, <laughs> there's nothing wrong with saying that World of Warcraft has jumped the shark. It had a good run. It had the best run of any video game in history. Oh, absolutely. No question about it. And, and you know, it's still don't, you know, six million people playing it is nothing to sneeze at. But by the same token, it's, it's, no, it's kind of left in the well, dust. It's, it's, like it's a, on its way out. Dungeons and Dragons is a household name. It's been around forever, but people really don't play that. Not anymore. Yeah. No, and they took quite a bit of the addictive competitiveness out of it. I haven't played it since then, but I've talked to other people who've said, yeah, it's not the same game it was when you were playing it hardcore. It was, it's, it's definitely kind of nerfed a bit as far as the addictive qualities. When you take out the addiction, it's amazing. People will quit eventually. Yeah. That's something that I never really got into World of Warcraft. I mean, I love uh, MMOs, RPGs, and I could not. <laughs> it's one of those I really couldn't get into. Um, I like the... Uh, 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 Warcraft 3, I played the crap out of that one. Yeah. But I never got really into World of Warcraft. Yeah. And I'm I'm just starting to kind of fall out of... It's kind of funny. I, I was really into, y'all know, uh, Final Fantasy XIV, um, the MMO, on PlayStation 4. And then the expansion came out, and all of a sudden it's like... Eh to start this all over again and, uh, and I'm, I'm haven't been real interested you know i'm pulling it up at night and then falling asleep in the middle of it really? so yeah yeah the expansion in many ways has killed me just simply because i had worked so hard and now there's all this stuff that i don't understand and it doesn't really give you it's kind of the downside of uh um of expansions for big games like this, is that when you start a big game, an MMO, it, you pretty much figure out the direction you need to go from your next quest to your next quest to your next quest to your next quest. It's got a very nice path to it. And it's pretty straightforward. Then you hit the, the level cap, you hit the end game, you're done. And then all of a sudden an expansion comes out. Or worse yet, you haven't done all of the last few missions on the former game and the expansion comes out so then you're back at step one but you don't know where do these new missions start where do i pick up these new missions how do i find where i need to go there's it's not it doesn't have a really good firm hand of direction of where to send you to start you getting back into the story and start getting into the into the mission based way of thinking instead of the grinding based which is what usually comes at the end of the of, of the end game of a mmo so yeah, I'm I'm I've kind of lost um interest in it since the expansion. Do you still have your uh you still pay uh your um subscription for that for World of Warcraft or did you end that a long time ago? I may. I don't know. I I had it on an annual, so I don't know and I don't remember what month it was. I could easily be paying for my World of Warcraft subscription after all this time. Who knows? It was like seventy bucks a year, I think it was. <laughs> I'm still paying for my Xbox 360 Gold. <laughs> exactly. I guess I'm still using it. I went back and played yeah. Left 4 Dead, so I mean, I guess I'm still playing it. And uh, are you getting your free games? Oh yeah, I always download my free oh, games. I, I see it. Who was that game Nick was playing? No, no, no well, the Road Not Taken or something. Yeah, I, I downloaded. It. I didn't play it, but I did download okay. it last on PS4. But yeah. no, I haven't got much for the uh, the Xbox games for free. There was, yeah, there was nothing really that jumped out yeah. at. Yeah, exactly. Yep. So, uh, last thing I've got is Justin TV is now officially dead. Um, if you had a Justin TV account, they are switching absolutely everything over to Twitch and Justin TV will not exist. If you have a Justin TV account that you want to switch over to Twitch, you will need to fill out a form at Twitch's site and you have to do it before September 5th. After that, your account is dead as well. Now, if you had videos and things on your uh, Justin TV account, um, they're already gone. They will not be transferred in addition. They're actually already nuked. So if you had videos from back in the old days of Justin TV, they have gone the way of the dodo. Um, is that Twitch now? What? Ju- yeah, tw- Justin TV is Twitch. 
So essentially what Justin TV was, it was, you know, the whole story of that, right? A guy named Justin who decided to life cast. He was the first guy that really got into life casting. Okay. All right. So yeah, guy named Justin hooked up a camera to his, that his, his to himself and life casted his entire life and it became an internet sensation. So he had the Justin TV domain and he turned it into kind of a video subscription service where people could life cast themselves. And then from Justin TV, they realized that a lot of people were using it for video games, um, for broadcasting video games uh, and video game play. So they switched, they essentially broke off Justin TV and branded a video game exclusive channel that was a division of Twitch or division of Justin called Twitch. And then Twitch got, is it either being bought out or got bought out? By Google. By Google. Yeah. Yeah. And I think it was for a billion dollars or something. And yeah. so they, now they're getting rid of Justin TV and focusing entirely primarily on video game broadcasting. And that will be Twitch TV and Justin will not be there anymore. Pretty wild stuff. Yep. So, hey, yeah. Speaking of Twitch TV, just a little uh, something I actually learned on my PS4 is I was trying to broadcast oh, about a week or two ago, and I couldn't get the comments to come up. Remember I was texting you? I said I can't get the comments to work. Right. Comments to work. Uh, and I went online trying to figure out what to do with this whole whole situation. Everybody said, oh, you got to reset the PS4. I was like, no, I'm not resetting the PS4 to broadcast just for the comments. I said, there's got to be another workaround. So then someone else suggests. So what I try to do is, is sign into my other company. There's no way on the PS4 to sign in and out of Twitch. Mm-hmm. You, you, once you sign in, you're in with that account name. And the only way that changes is if somebody else signs on. So when you sign on to the GameHounds account, then if I go back, I got to sign in. You know, again, so it's like only one at a time can be can be linked up, I guess, so to speak. So anyway, I couldn't get it to work. No matter what I did, I couldn't get it to work. So eventually, what I had to do is sign into my PS4 and go in and basically disconnect from the network. Mm -hmm. I had to go in. There was a some kind of a setting. Go in and say network setting and say disconnect. So basically, unconnect from the internet, reconnect to the internet. And then when I went to broadcast, I got the the options to sign into Twitch again. Hmm. And then the comments worked. But I was in some oh. kind of, I was in some kind of a loop where I could broadcast Twitch and you could see me, but the chat room wasn't working, or at least I couldn't see anybody in chat. And that's half the fun is 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 you know corresponding with anybody watching through the chat room so they can chat with you and you can read their chat and you know respond to them. So without the comments, it's kind of you know defeats the there's no interaction. Mm -hmm getting at so yeah so if you if that ever happens where you can't get the comment box to come up if you're broadcasting on your ps4 uh you might try that is to go into your networks and log out of the network which basically disconnects you from the internet and then try logging back in or restarting the ps4 or whatever it is and then go in and then then you should be able to log into twitch mm -hmm. but it was really weird it was just it was a whole night process of trying to figure this out and googling and the whole bit and I was like, yeah, I'm not about to go and reset the whole PS4 and start over again. You know, that, that's, that yeah, that's, that's, I'm, I'm glad you got that sorted because I know that you were working on that forever. Yeah, it was. <laughs> yeah, your says, Jesus, Goalie, does anything ever work for you day one? <laughs> uh, I know. I know. It, it's, you know, oh, who was it Nick saying last week that the, only the even ones work for me? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the even games. Um, in other news, uh, iOS news, an Art Deco infused Bioshock. Actually, it's not just the Art Deco infused; it's the whole of the Bioshock game is coming to iPad and iPhone. Um, to be more specific, uh, when played with a Bluetooth controller, the port of the 2007 Irrational title is a mesmerizing experience. But the port was created by 2K China. It's the same team that successfully brought the XCOM Enemy Unknown over to iOS. And it's been tinkered with a bit to ensure that the platform can handle the game. And that if a gamer were to decide to play with the touch controls, it would still be fun. So it is... Do we have a release date on it? I'm looking for the release date. I'm reading this from Polygon. Um, but yeah, so we are going to see Bioshock this summer for iPhone and iPad, which I think is cool. I think it's a great idea to bring some of these older games that were really beloved into the iOS world, especially things like that had 
big, expansive um, environments that would be conducive to point and touch? Uh, at my work, I prefer the, like I said, I need the controls for some game, the controller. And that's that's one that I really needed. I needed the controller in my hands for that one. It's like Diablo. I was watching a video of the Reaper of Souls uh-huh. the, the, for the, you know, the upcoming one, but it was a PC review of the Reaper of Souls. And you could see the arrow ahead of the guy. So, so you would click with the arrow to point the guy where to go. And then I guess you'd use some of the buttons for the attacks. And that's one game that you, the controller works way better, at least as far as I'm concerned, with, than the mouse and keyboard is Diablo. You can control your person with the stick, you know. And, you know, because I tried that game. There was another game similar to Diablo on the, on the PC on Steam. And I forget what it was called. Path to something. I forget. It was a, it was a Diablo. Path of Exile. Yeah, Path of Exile, and that you clicked ahead and then clicked on the enemy, and it was just it didn't it didn't feel good compared to the controller for Diablo three. So in in that case, um, you know, as far as you know, some games you need the controller in your hand. So this Bioshock, even though you can play it on the iPad, I, I don't know. I think there's enough combat in it that you might need the controller to play that. Mm-hmm. Um. Here's something that I thought was very interesting that not only was there a study, but I thought to myself, why was there a study? Doesn't this happen to everyone? Apparently not. But Nottingham Trent University over in the UK did a study on video games and gamers who play them about sounds from them being heard long after the gamer has stopped playing. And they, it turns out that yes, this happens. And of course they could have just asked me, I would have told them like, you know, when you're playing all night and all of a sudden you turn off the television, you go to bed, you lay in bed and you swear you can still hear the sound. Yep. I used to do that with Mass Effect. I could still hear the engines in my head and I would be like, am I really hearing that? And I'd have to focus. Am I really hearing the engines? I played so much Last of Us that in the middle of the night I was trying to press triangle to flip my pillow over. <laughs> <laughs> I was. No joke. I was just like, oh, I gotta flip this pillow over. Do I hit triangle? Will that flip the pillow over? I can't flip the pillow as I hit triangle. <laughs> I yeah. was, oh, that's funny. I was half asleep. I, was like, <laughs> I can't flip the twins the controller to flip the pillow. <laughs> so yeah, anyway... For the longest, I was singing shanties uh, from... Yes, uh, I could hear the shanties. Yes, <laughs> from from uh, Assassin's Creed. Yeah, I'd be I like in the, washing the dishes. And it's like, is someone singing? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, the study from Nottingham Trent University's International Gaming Research Unit. It got published in the International Journal, Journal of Cyber Behavior, Psychology and Learning. Psychologists visited online video game forums and collected data from 1,244 gamers who'd experienced, quote, game transfer phenomena, which are perceptions, cognitions, and behaviors influenced by video game playing. Of these, 155 or 12% claim to have had auditory experiences as a result of their gaming. And I'm thinking 12%? Really? Because it happens to me with every game, every single game. When I turn the game off at night, I go lying down to sleep. I hear it. And it has nothing to do with how much it's, I have, have heard. It becomes like an ear bug. Sometimes so, it's the, mus- the mood music will stay with me. Yes, the music yes. will definitely stay with me. I swear I will hear it as I walk around the house. So I'm really surprised that it's only 12%. And I'm wondering... <laughs> Jaeger says the journal of what we already know. Yeah, I know! <laughs> but I'm alarmed that it's only 12% because that makes me in the minority, which means that 88% of you don't experience this statistically speaking and i can't believe that's true because everybody i know i granted i've never mentioned it to you guys about you know hearing music after you've stopped playing but i don't know anybody who i have mentioned it to that has said oh yeah that never happens no it happens everybody in the chat room doesn't it it happens right put it this way if it doesn't happen to you please let me let us know so that i can I always want to write to them and go, yeah, no, you know, my very unofficial study of a lot more video gamers than 1,200, we all do it. Everybody does it. Hello, Piss. Piss just joined the, joined the chat room. 
I find that it's not so much the sounds as I just have the dreams. Remember those marathon Left for Dead? Oh God, yes. Oh, the, the, the you know what's the one that got zombies and and squealing and hordes and oh. Mass Effect One got into my dreams big time, and um um Dragon Age Oranges got into my dreams big time. Oh, yeah. Pretty much if there's very if some very intense romance angles that re I really respond to, those will be in my dreams. Like that person will be wandering through my dream. So, yeah. I think it really depends if you, if you like I say, if you go bulk, if you play for hours and just play this game constantly, I think I think it does creep in. That's what happened to Last of Us is I just played it, it's hit that bitch hard for a couple of days straight just non-stop up late and I think I finished it at one in the morning but does it really take that much because I will do it after an like less than an hour of gaming yeah oh it, for me it's I really got to engulf myself into yeah. it like I said when we would play five six hours of left for dead and then you go to bed right after yeah that's all it's on your brain squeegee you know? says I typically have an unrelated song stuck in my head all the time so game music doesn't get a foothold um AC Ray says, I might have dreams, but I don't tend to hear things. Really? Kevin Bulware says, I never hear things that aren't there. Edie thinks it's normal. <laughs> I think it is normal, especially when you're playing games. Blackshore Voice says, I don't remember it happening to me. However, I woke up the other night yelling, if you see creep, see I, I see you, creeper. You are not going to get me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, AC Ray says, I generally listen to podcasts while I play. So I I guess we are weirdos. We are the twelve percent. No, I hear stuff. I oh, mean, I definitely I... hear stuff. I will I will be out at the end of the night. I will go out and have a cigarette after playing games. So I shut down the house, shut them, take the dogs out for them for pee, get them in their kennels, and then I'll go out and have my last cigarette. And as I'm sitting there, I will hear things, and I will have to stop and go. Am I hearing that, or is it in my head? And it'd be like, no, it's in my head. But I totally hearing the engines or I'm totally hearing um the sound of battles like if you like battlefield all night I will hear the ambient sound of battle absolutely it's amazing what that stuff will do mm -hmm. well I think what Goldie's uh well, Goldie kind of says true to me I only hear when I've been playing a game for a long long time um like Diablo, I played that for forever, and I kept hearing the the opening song when you, when you log in. I just kept hearing that, like just humming that, or um, the when we were talking about uh, Assassin's Creed, the shanties. I would just be not only hearing that, but then I'll be singing it as I'm hearing it. Right. Head, I, so so yeah. it becomes a combination of auditory hallucination plus an earbug, because an earbug is different. When it's in your head, it's just in your head. But I'm actually hearing it i'm actually hearing it it feels like i'm hearing it through my ears like voices yeah. talking mm -hmm. yep i had that when i played the ghost recon back on the original xbox there was a really nice orchestral soundtrack that was in the menu so you'd be waiting for people to join or selecting your your mission if you were playing single player mm -hmm. and i still hear the uh it wasn't a trumpet it was just some other, other wind instrument very deep wind wind instrument uh, and it would be like boom, 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 boom. That was, and I would, I would. And you have that. to go. If, am I hearing that? Is the TV set still on? Because you would, you heard that over, over and over and over and over again, right? Night playing that that damn game, and and then you'd be off somewhere. Like mostly at night when you go to bed and just sitting there in the room by yourself and quiet. You know, it's all dark. So sometimes you'd hear it then. Right. Yeah, and that's. I guess that's a good way to describe it. Is that. The difference between, I guess, an earbug and earbug, you never, it's, you know, it's in your head. Like, oh, I can't get this song out of my head. But you're not hearing it. It's in your head. When you've got these auditory hallucinations, you kind of are half wondering if you've left the television on or if you've left the, the, the console on. Like, oh, did I turn everything off? Because I can hear it. I still hear it. You have to go over and check it and go, oh, no, I guess I did turn it off. So anyway all right so i guess we are weirdos i guess that 12 percent is kind of confirmed yep uh you guys hear about uh uh xbox is um going to be selling their uh madden 15 edition with um which will come out in response to their nfl app that they're coming up with and uh, for windows 8 and 
uh, I guess for the um, Xbox. And with uh, with the purchase of uh, Xbox, you'll be able to get um, digital download for Madden uh, 15. Okay, um, so the, the purchase of the Xbox, they're going to bundle it with an Xbox? No, they're uh, Madden 15. Yeah, Xbox One on August 26th, you'll, you'll be able to get Madden 15 with that. Okay, all right, fun. all right. Well, that's kind of cool. I'm very close to getting a Xbox One. Very really? close. Yeah, I'm I'm probably before the end of the year. I there's I, nothing I there's need. nothing. <laughs> I mean, it just again, again, it's so much you know that it's the same on Xbox One and PS4. It's like Madden and NHL, you know. So everything coming out for the Xbox One is on PS4. There's nothing exclusive on Xbox One. That's going to make me spend four or five hundred dollars on the system right now. Yeah, yeah, but I, I've got a couple of friends that are Xbox One people that I would like to play with. So it's like I, I, I'm like I said, I'm 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 on the verge of getting one. It's not going to happen before the end of the year, though. To me, the only way that I'll actually get an Xbox One, it has to be something that is different, um, like a bigger hard drive, uh, have a, some sort of limited edition one, uh, like like uh, like a Halo, like the Halo games coming out. I'm, I'm hoping that for that one there, they come out with a bigger hard drive and an actual special edition, something that will just make it worth my while for actually to getting it. Two to three rock solid drop dead games for me to go do that. There would have to be something I could not do on PS4 that I couldn't live without mm. for me to do that. And right now, there's just nothing there for me to say, oh, man, I got to go get one of these because I'm going to miss out on this game. It would have to be a couple, two or th- probably three games that I could not play on the on the PlayStation. I am having to come by. Jaeger, Jaeger says, saying to me that ED wants some Force Man, and I'm telling him, Actually, I'll just tell you right now. I have already spent 50 bucks on your stupid games that I don't like. No, no. Force Man, not going to happen. The day I finish One Piece will be the day that I play Force Man. How about that? Oh, wait a minute. No, I'm thinking... No, I'm, he's talking about Force Man, like the person. Not Okay, I'm sorry. Never mind. <laughs> just thinking... What am I thinking of? The game... You you have you completely lost. Yeah, yeah. is it there a game? Is it there a, a Nintendo game? I'm thinking. The, yeah, that's I think you might be thinking Mega Man. Mega Man. That's what I'm thinking. Okay, I'm thinking Mega Man. Sorry, I'm. I see. I I core dumped the entire Force Man experience out of my head. Thank you, asshole. Now he's back in. <laughs> that's why I'm not going back to Xbox. <sighs> Yeah, good point. Actually, you know, you've just you both have made a very good uh, a reason for me not to get an Xbox One again. <laughs> anyway, um, um, yeah, or Bomberman. That's what I was thinking. Thank you, Squeegee. Um, so anyway, uh, any other news, or should we just close this out? Um, oh, we've been kind of streaming along pretty good there. Yeah. Um, let's guys... the chat room. Let's turn to the chat room. And see what what's going on in the, in the chat room. Uh, they're talking about pre-orders. Um, talking about an asshole named Force Man. <laughs> <laughs> talking about Star Wars Unleashed. Um, Piss says he's starting to watch Sun- want Sunset Overdrive. Yeah, yeah. I think Sunset Over is going to. I think it, isn't Sunset Overdrive going to be released with a white. Xbox One bundle? I think Something I read that. Like that. I think Destiny, so. Destiny's coming white PS4. Yeah. I don't know what's coming white Xbox One. I think you might be right about that. Let me look it up. Yeah. Sunset Overdrive, it kind of reminds me a lot yeah, of... Yeah, it is. Uh, white Xbox One heading to retail with the Sunset Overdrive. Yeah. Too much second... It reminds me of Second Sun too much, and I wasn't real big on... I, I just got rid of Infamous Second Sun. Yeah, yeah. I, I had my fun with it, but it 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 really kind of ran out of steam in a hurry. Yeah. So anyway, let's let's we've run out well, of steam. I let's you well, know, Goldie, okay. let's leave with uh, a little gas in the tank as opposed to running out of gas on the road okay. and just letting it die. I I want to talk about destiny because then oh. we get to talk to you guys about that. Okay, Goldie, 
you yes. were saying last week that about you were not pre-ordering, probably not pre-ordering or anything like that um, because of what you've been hearing. Um, that I actually did have... Uh, uh, oh, just a, to be clear, a, what I've been hearing is what there's a few people saying, again, on the internet, Edie, but I mean in other shows, it, I'm concerned at the depth and the, the size of Destiny because the beta was, was decent-sized beta. So how much bigger than the beta is this game going to be? And that's going to be key for me to drop. Well, it's going to be 120 bucks. So I'd have to buy one for me, one for the wife. And if it's just a little bit bigger than the beta, that's not worth the money. So that was my concern that it was small, not enough missions, not enough planets. It's not going to be this big, huge game that we're all thinking it's going to be. So take it away. Okay. Um, did you actually check to see how many hours you actually played off Destiny? Um, on the Bungie site, for you could actually check just exactly how many hours altogether and how many kills and everything you did just at the beta portion. For mine, I clocked in at under 20 hours just those few days that I was playing uh, in just those one mission. Um, Destiny, there's most likely a, once you hit level 20, uh, which was which Edie said was correct. There is going to be a there going to be raids started at level twenty, meaning there are six play six players, six friends. And that's the whole thing. They have to be friends, have to be logged in to do these raids. They're not open to anybody. And from doing these raids, they uh, they're extensive raids lasting hours. Yes, I did hear that. Now here's my problem. What if you only have three or four people? What if you can't have six friends all playing Destiny at the same time? Are you, are you screwed? You can't play. Well, okay. Uh, another thing is I, I opened up a clan already on the Destiny site for the Game Hounds. So Ooh. anyone uh, who has Destiny and for the PS4 can actually join our clan. And we could actually pick and choose game nights where we actually could run these raids. And we're talking about raids starting at 20, 22, 25. And this is for the high-level gear. And um, so the game, yes, the game I'm seeing that once you hit level 20, you'll pretty much be maxed out to complete the game. But from there, it actually spans, uh, stands more than that. There's actually going to be a lot more to do uh, past that. So just thinking to myself, just doing those uh, seven missions uh, on Earth, which we did pretty good and we did pretty quick. And that actually did take, take pretty long. And then it's going to other planets. But once you complete all that and once you plan, finish up with the story, more areas open up. Once the other areas open up, that's when you start doing the other stuff that goes along with the game. So we're talking about, like you were talking about Diablo and, and how you had fun with it, Kim going back and forth, back and forth, carrying the loot. Yes, there is a loot system in here. And there's also leveling of the loot system as you notice with your weapons. So it will go past that to the whole point that you will have to, with your friends, organize a way how to go towards each individual battle together so you can see how to take off the bosses. Uh, for example, remember we're playing, um, what's it called, the, um, the game for Xbox, the, uh, the cell shaded game that we kept playing. Ba um, Borderlands? Yes, Borderlands. Remember who we were playing Borderlands and there was uh, one the the main boss the main bosses we kept doing from the DLC that were really freaking hard and we had to figure out how to do them. Oh and, yes, Terramorphous. Yeah. No, no, yeah, like like like, like that what? one or um, like on, on the pirate one. How they had the secret bosses once you pass once you pass the actual story. There's imagine that, but for six players just going off and just destroying a single boss, and we're talking about raid missions i mean we're talking about this is the only things that we're going to be able to doing is getting those type of items so yes i do see the game actually taking a lot longer than what you Good, think of. My, my concern though is that the bulk of the game is going to be three player co-op okay so your what are they strikes or mission whatever they have so, so you can only be three player that's a weird i know i i think yeah. goalie you're reading way too much into that beta no, no, no. They will not have just three member. No. No. no like I said, the raids ones are going to be up to six. Yeah, raids raids. Six. I'm saying, you know, you know when we went into a mission, right? And it's okay, let's all get together. And we were flying up with our ships. Right. But it's like the missions in Grand Theft Auto Five that there were missions that were one to four players. There were also missions that were two to six players. Well, if that's the case, then good. I'm just concerned that 
Everything I saw was one to three players mm. for Michigan. Of course, now, it was a beta. Well, and I, I just said I'm, that was just the opening. But I'm hearing right. there's three classes and there's only going to be three people. That's oh, what I'm hearing. It's, it's, it's three classes the, with subclasses with two subclasses each. So there's going to be three, six, two. It, it better open up to four more than three. Okay, because my concern again, this is just concern. Oh, I just think you should not get beta. No, I just don't get this. You just <laughs> don't get it. Yeah, you're gonna hate it. Just gonna get it. Don't get it. Or six. Don't get it. And have four. I just shouldn't get it. It's not a game for you. You know, you don't make a restaurant with a table for three. You're okay. right. You're right. And you know what? That's why you should not go to that restaurant. I'm hanging up. <laughs> <laughs> Probably run by women who hate men anyway. Yeah. <laughs> Nick's probably going to be my waiter. <laughs> Imagine Nick being your waiter. Oh. Like, Make sure you wash that fun hand. I <laughs> Ew, is that your fun hand in my plate? Uh, uh, yeah, Ew. Can you tell me what the special is. And, and here's Nick. Like, um, it's a, it's like a steak. Like, and, and and they like they cook it right, and they like <laughs> like they take potatoes like. And they, they mash them all up. You know what I mean? They mash them up. And then, like, they, they, like, take the steak and, like, the potato and, like, they, like, put them on the same plate. And then, like, they add some vegetables. <laughs> enough, enough, uh, enough. We got it. <laughs> awesome. Like, I'll take it. <laughs> game I was drinking game. <laughs> so we've still got to do that. All right. The last item. All right. Ready? You're going to like this. Ah, look at Piss. Look at Piss. What did Piss just write in the chat room? Hello. Let's see. I heard on Gamertag that they said they wanted to keep the story missions intimate and it's going to keep it at three. They dun, had dun, the community dun. manager. Wait, but that's the story missions. Dun, dun, dun. This is not then clearly go goalies is not the game for you. Shouldn't want to do it. Sorry. There are three person I'm, tables well, I, in this I'm restaurant. Old. There's a lot of six person tables. But you know, if if you because you're worried that there are three person tables in this shop, I think that you should probably. I have not five people here. on my friends list. Okay, that means all five. That's it. In Destiny. No, I don't know what's going on. All right, so last item is uh, Grand Theft Auto. You know, Grand Theft Auto Five. It's still actually surprisingly robust. The online uh, multiplayer part. Um, I actually played a little bit last night. Ran around, got killed. It was kind of fun, but there is a new game that has kind of developed among the community using a glitch apparently if you are holding a rocket launcher sorry a grenade launcher and you punch a car at random it will explode so what people are doing is they're playing car roulette and either that or they're loading up a vehicle with a bunch of um uh, uh explosives and then taking turns punching it to see who could be the last person to punch it before the car goes off <laughs> apparently there there's videos online apparently it's a lot of fun to watch so i think i'm actually going to be getting into some grand theft auto 5 this week just so you know mm. you're all aware would, okay would you get it for the playstation 4 would i get it for the playstation 4 probably probably not okay. probably not I, i'm thinking i might i'm thinking i might i'm thinking i'm possibly picking that up it, uh, it depends on what the what the online is like you know for the playstation 4 or if it's like because there's so uh, nah probably not just play, stay with 360 there's certainly more than enough people that are still going in to play it yeah so all right so, um, any other news to tell? I'm still getting messages from you guys. I want to say thanks to those of you who have sent us email. Um, let's see. I, I think there was one named Mace who sent us an email. Um, thank you so much for sending us email about whether you listen on iHeartRadio. I, I think we're going to stay with iHeart, at least for the moment. Um, because we are getting quite a few people that say they listen on iHeart. So if you haven't already listened just using iHeartRadio, please feel free to do so because we're not going away from there. So um, anything else we want to add before we close this out? I think we had a pretty uh, decent sized show. Today. I think we had a definitely had a decent sized show. It's full, as they say. Yep. <laughs> All right. So let's close this out. You have been listening to Game Hounds, episode 274. We did record this on Wednesday, August 6, 2014. 
2014, there is a way, men, multiple ways to get a hold of us. First way to do it is to go to our website, gamehounds.net. You can also go to our uh, email, send us an email, gamehounds at gmail.com. There is a Facebook page, it's facebook.com forward slash the gamehounds. Go ahead and like that page because if you do so, you will get a regular update courtesy of Pissboy, who does a fabulous job as our community manager. He updates with the latest and greatest news throughout the week. So not just not only will you get notices of this show going live and being available, you will also get updates and stay apprised of news as it happens. That's facebook.com forward slash the game hounds. If you've never listened to us live, please do so. We are on Wednesday at eleven AM Pacific, one PM eleven twelve one two PM Eastern. Sorry, math is hard. Um, 2 p.m. Eastern. Um, we are live, so join us on Spreaker.com. That's speaker with an R, Spreaker. And you can join us live and join the chat room. We well, do want to say everything, uh, say thank you to everybody in the chat room. If I mention, forget your name or if I don't see your name, I'm sorry. We've got Piss, we've got Blacks for Void, we've got Kevin Bulware, we have Jaeger, we had uh, AC Wraith, uh, we had a lot of people, Squeegee ton of people Corey Wallace we have a ton of people from all over so thank you so much for joining us on the show and stop typing (laughs) we can hear it (laughs) and uh, so uh, that's it Um, also oh actually we have a voice and text line the voice and text line is 304-300-9889 feel free to drunk dial it in fact we got an email I think it was an email or a tweet this week from the person who did Oh, our yeah. very first drunk dial. So please feel free to drunk dial us anytime. We will listen to you and laugh our asses off and probably point. So anyway, thank you, uh, M. Hawk. Thank you so much for filling in for Nick. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Keep up the great work on the Facebook page. Yeah, you're, you are such a trooper. And you're also going to be joining us for PAX later on this month. So Yes, I am. All right. And Goalie, we will see you next week. All right. All right. Talk to you guys later. Bye-bye. Bye, guys.